morning. Here we are with Dr. Roger Tsai. He is a plastic surgeon and he's in the center of Dr. Mutiki and Sunset Boulevard and North Tohini Drive. <laughs> Very nice to meet you. The same here. I love you and I love your work. You're so conscious. Thank you. um, I have worked with a lot of surgeons, but to be honest with you, you're just keeping the integrity, which is so important in, in this industry mm -hmm. because it has become a runaway train, you know? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about what you are about? What do you do? Mm -hmm. I am a plastic surgeon. Um, I trained at the University of Texas uh, where I did my residency and did all my medical training and now I moved and joined Dr. Monaghy here um, in West Hollywood in California um, to start kind of my own practice uh, with him. Um, I do a lot of cosmetic procedures, um, pretty much head to toe. I do a lot of facial rejuvenation, um, whether it's facelifts, eye lifts, um, anything like that, brow lifts. I'll do a lot of breast surgeries um, including uh, breast augmentations, breast lift, breast reductions. I also do a lot of body contouring, um, such as tummy tucks, liposuction, um, Brazilian butt lifts, um, and any kind of liposuction in the thighs or anything that patients uh, desire. Although cosmetic surgery is a large part of my practice, I also do a lot of reconstructive surgery, such as uh, breast cancer reconstruction for mm -hmm. those who um, have un unfortunately had, had to undergo some, uh, some breast surgery to remove the cancer. Yeah. And so they come to us, uh, they come to me, to um, have the breast reconstructed. Um, and still talking about some of the facial uh, rejuvenation procedures. Nowadays, there's a trend going more towards a non-invasive kind of facial rejuvenation procedures. A lot of patients are scared to go under the knife, especially having scars on the face and things like that. So the trend now is going heavily towards the non-invasive kind of the spa uh, treatments where we do a lot of injectables such as Botox and fillers such as Juvederm and Restylin. Um, the Botox uh, kind of gets rid, uh, sound, diminishes the, the, line, the signs of wrinkles um, by kind of relaxing some of the muscles that you put it into. The fillers help by volumizing certain areas of the face, such as the mid face or kind of the areas around the, the nose or the lips even mm -hmm. to augment them mm -hmm. to look a little bit mm -hmm. nicer. Um, augmenting these features uh, actually gives you more of a youthful appearance. Um, as, as, we're, as, as a younger individual, our faces are more like a heart-shaped uh, face where the cheeks is full and it tapers down to the chin. However, as we age, the cheeks end up kind of, kind of drooping a little bit and you get more of a rectangular kind of a square shaped face. And so with some of the things that we do to rejuvenate the face, we try to bring the face back to a more youthful mm. heart shaped appearance. Very important to have a good eye, a good aesthetic eye. You should be able to see a patient and know exactly, and now after speaking with them, kind of talk to them about their goals and see what they, they desire. And then also look at them and be able to really scrutinize and look at every little detail and be able to tell the patients, hey, I see this here, I see that there. You, should, you have really need a very keen eye um, in order to do these procedures. Because everything on the face is, um, in, it's, it's every little millimeter of change can actually change the way you look. So it's a very little changes right. can make a big change overall. So it's important to realize that. Um, and so with the different fillers, just many kinds of different fillers out there in the market right now. Mm. Um, I can go on for days and days, but I can tell you kind of the main ones that we, we deal with here okay. at, at, our, at, our, at our practice. So um, there's two main companies, or three companies, but there's two main ones that actually make these fillers. One is the Juvederm, which is from Allergan, and uh, the other one's Restylane, which is El Galdermo. So there's two main companies that kind of do it. The way you kind of can look at it, it's what I like to tell patients, it's kind of like Coke and Pepsi. There's a little difference between each, but you know, as far as what they're made of, um, they're both made of hyaluronic acid which is something our body naturally makes. It's this mm -hmm. gel um, that pretty much all of our cells kind of swim in and kind of live in. So it's something our body kind of naturally makes. It's not made in a laboratory, but it's a chemical, it's a compound that our body naturally makes. That's why it gets dissolved over the course of, you know, six, eight, 10 months or something like that. Um, so the difference between the fillers, um, we can start with the Juvederm. Okay. So uh, Juvederm, there's regular Juvederm and Juvederm Ultra Plus. The Ultra Plus is just particles that are a bit thicker and tend to, or sorry, a little bit larger and they last a little bit longer than the regular Juvederm. So with those two products, you can pretty much put those anywhere. It's like a universal filler. You can put it in the mid cheeks, you put it here uh, around the nasolabial folds to help mm -hmm. fill that out and also on the lips. Mm -hmm. um, I like to use the Juvederm in the nasolabial folds and the lips. I like to use something else they have on the cheeks and, and I'll kind of go to that a little bit later. But the Juvederm you can pretty much use anywhere on the face. Um, another product that Juvederm makes is called Voluma. Um, so the Voluma particles, uh, it just come, came out not too long ago. 
um, probably earlier this year, and those particles are a lot bigger and thicker. And the reason for that is they want to use it to kind of hold and volumize the face, therefore the name Voluma. I like to put that in the mid-face in this area because the reason, um, the difference between filling here and here, this area you need more volume and you need something thick and something more sturdy in order to hold the heavy tissues that's fallen over time to stay up in that area. Mm -hmm. The Juvederm is a little bit softer um, and doesn't quite hold as well as the Voluma. That's why I like to use the Juvederm in this area and this area where there's a lot of animation, a lot of talking. You don't want anything too hard or too thick in those areas, something softer. Uh -huh. But in this area, there's not too much animation in the area. That's more volume. And so I tend to like use Voluma in that area. I see, yeah. And so then talking about the other company that makes fillers, that's their comp uh, competition. Um, Restylane, again, is uh, kind of like Juvederm. There's a, you know, it's, it's a universal filler that you can put it put much put anywhere, either in the mid face and the folds here or the lips or even down here. The marionette lines and then sometimes you can put it around the the lines on the on the lips um Restlin also makes something called Restlin silk um it's something that that company made particularly just for lips um you don't really use it anywhere else you can but they made it and formulated specifically for lips and i found that really works very well mm -hmm. um it gets rid of the, a lot of the fine lines that are kind right. of um, around the mouth and also gives a nice natural appearance of the lips um uh, and there, so the, the second company's uh, competition to the Voluma is something called Perlane, or their right. new name coming out is now called Wrestling Lift. So it's the same thing, it's a larger particle. Uh -huh. um, so uh, I tend to like to use that for the mid face area. Um, and so, as far as the anesthesia is concerned, the anesthesia these days is pretty, the general, general anesthesia is very safe these days. Um, as long as you're healthy, as long as your labs and everything look good, which we all check, we check everything. We talk to you about your history. We make sure your blood levels are okay. And if everything looks good and then fine, then general anesthesia is actually very, very safe. So okay. I know you hear stories here and there, but it's because the patients had some kind of you know, liver issue. They can't you know, metabolize the anesthesia or they had some heart issues. Most of the things you hear of patients were already somewhat sick, but if you're healthy, individual, general anesthesia is very, very safe. Mm -hmm. um, as far as looking for surgeons and surgery and stuff like that, um, the best way, again, first thing, do your research, go online, look at, look, look, look at their bio or their resume or something, see if they're trained in the specialty that is, like, that is you want. If you want to do you know, plastic surgery, make sure the guy's trained in plastic surgery. Um, and then the best thing to do is, how do you know who's good, right? So the best <laughs> thing to do is go, look, go, go, go to multiple consultations. My best advice is see multiple doctors. A lot of people have, you know, free consultations or, you know, $100 or something very cheap. In, in, in the grand scheme of things, the little $100 here, $100 is not a, not a big deal. Finding the right surgeon is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So the best thing is to go and see a few consultations, three, four, even five consultations. See how you feel. See what the doctor is saying. See exactly like you were saying with me, like you felt comfortable. Um, so the most important thing is comfort. If what he's saying makes sense and if he's a, you know, if he was trained to do plastic surgery, mm -hmm. which is the most important thing, then you're going to be pretty safe. Right. Is it okay to ask for referrals, maybe, or, or see? Because I, yes, I, most, we know mm -hmm. how to do photos. So mm -hmm. the before and after, mm -hmm. when I used to hire makeup people in the mm -hmm. industry, I was like, can you do a makeover? Mm -hmm. Because she can show me any photo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so two things you can look at. Um, first of all, you can look at before and after photos. So a lot of people, some people have it online, some people have it in their office, and they just have a book of pictures. You go, like, hey, can I see some pictures right. and photos that you've done? And that's one way of seeing before right. and after results. Second thing also is look, every doctor has reviews. That's the big thing these days, mm. reviews, reviews, reviews. Everybody's website has a link. If you look, you know, just sometimes right. you have to search for it, but it'll say reviews or something like that. Look at the reviews and see what people have to say. Um, and, and that's another, again, another mm -hmm. important thing that talks about the physician integrity. If they, you know, kind of just like we we're talking about right. how their experience was in the office mm -hmm. and you know, how their surgical experience was, how was it afterwards? Right. So I think those things, there's a couple things that you can do research wise on your own right. before you do the consultation to see if, Hey, is this doctor fit for me? Is this right. what I'm looking for? My, my girlfriend, very close friend, she's an ICU nurse mm -hmm. and she's very nursey. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she said, well, you, you, the only thing you need to do is just call the, uh, the board, mm -hmm. reach out the board and reach out, see if there's been any complaints mm -hmm. and if they're valid or whatever, because mm -hmm. people can complain anyway. So that's the thing. Um, doesn't matter how good you are. There's always going to be somebody that can, that'll complain. 
Um, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. We can all be din doing the same dinner and uh -huh. somebody just didn't like it. Exactly, exactly. So, mm. um, you know, that's one way of going about it as well. Uh, yeah, you know what? I, I went with an actress, a pretty well-known girl that does a lot of work, and she's got really beautiful, beautiful work done. Uh, anyway, and... Um, she was going through some stuff, and the surgeon, very well-known guy, and he said to her, I will not do surgery on you if you think you can get over your relationship with the surgery. Come back when you're done and let me know what do you want to change then. He said, you know, often women, when they're getting divorced and when they're going through exactly. stuff, mm -hmm. pow, they think it's a physical thing. They exactly they you know once a lot of a lot of divorces a lot of life changes or moving to a new town anything that somehow changes your life in a drastic way mm. a lot of women think that or a new job even um, or promotion a lot of different things that change your life wow. a lot of women come in and like I want this done I need to be look better I need bigger breasts I need this and that it's very important to weed those out to say what are your motivations is this something right. you've been thinking about for two or three years or is this something that you just recently thought about oh right. I just got a divorce. I want a breast implant right. now. That's probably not the good time to do it. Right. If they've been thinking about it for five years and they're like, you know, I've been thinking about this for a while, and, and you know, there's gray it's lines. Different, and stuff like that. right? But it's very important to really, you know, talk to the patients that come in, find out what their expectations are, find out what their motives are. Right. If their motives are something different, right? You know, they want to attract right. this, or their boyfriend's telling them to get this done. Right. I don't really care if my breasts are bigger, but my husband, my boyfriend, wants me to have bigger breasts. Right. That's something you got to be careful and say, listen, right. this is your body. You know, it's important that you're happy with it. Right. This is for you. This isn't for anybody else. Right. This is just for you. It's not a secondhand validation. Here. Exactly. It's no your validation. Exactly. Yeah. Because I noticed that. And then and the problem is because I, being a girl, I see we wig out and we do our thing. And it's a whole chunk of life right there that we're living that is in between hysteria, getting lost, and it, it's a whole mess. Mm -hmm. But when we come out of there, we may not really be happy with what happened, and exactly. we probably went to do something else, mm -hmm. a knee instead of exactly. uh, an ear, whatever, yeah. And let me, mm -hmm. since plastic surgery is fairly easy, it's quick, you get immediate results, some right. people are like, it's a one quick stop, bam. Right. Um, I could feel better by myself if I just had this one quick procedure done. Right. And it, it's also tough because nowadays with magazines and TV, and you see all these pretty women out there, and this and that, like, oh, I want right. to be like this, I want to be like this. So there's a lot of pressure, I guess, that, right. that's placed on on women these days to, right. to, to look their best or pretty. And sometimes with life changes, a lot of women are like, right. I need to do something for myself. And then you right. do it for the wrong motivation. You do it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. So as far as weight loss is concerned, um, uh, obviously the best thing to do is lose it yourself. Um, right. Um, uh, in the exercise, dieting, right. it's not only good for your health, but it also makes you feel better and look better as well. Um, I do a lot of surgeries too, so I see a lot of people coming in and it's important for me to, re and to again, find out the patient's expectations and goals. Some people don't want to go to sleep, some people are scared to go to sleep, but they have like, you know, belly fat or something they want to get rid of. Mm -hmm. So then they would be a good candidate for what we call a cool school thing, which is something that's uh, been out for a few years now. It's very, very popular. It's non-invasive. You don't have to go to sleep. Um, you pretty much just sit in a chair. Um, it's an hour per treatment, depending on which areas you want to do. And it's pretty much just this probe that you put on and it sucks the fat into this little machine and it freezes it. So their skin is more resilient than the fat. So even though the skin gets somewhat you know, cold as well, the fat gets destroyed before any of the skin scale does. So the fat kind of ends up dying off. Um, it doesn't die off immediately. It takes about six weeks or so for the body to really absorb it, metabolize it, and, and break it down. So it does take some time to see the results. Um, but again, it's non-invasive. You're awake the whole time. And there's no risk of going to sleep and there's no scarring. Um, so I guess I can talk a little bit about some of the big surgical procedures. Obviously, I do everything literally from head to toe, but um, you probably don't want to hear everything. But I'll hit the kind of the big basic ones. We do want to hear you everything. everything? <laughs> that, and you know what? Uh -huh. So many people ask. Yeah. And you, I have so much respect and I trust you so yeah. much that I totally, from you, it's a whole different thing. Yeah. yeah. So starting from the head down, I guess I can start in the face. So a lot of uh, surgeries that I perform that I feel that are very, very good for patients are um, starting from the, the brow lift. Sometimes, sometimes people who as we age, sometimes the brows tend to drop down and everything feels a little heavy. So having a brow lift really not only pulls everything up, but also as we age, the hairline recedes a little bit. So you can actually pull the hairline down and pull the eyebrows up at the same time to give that youthful look. Anything you do with the eyes oh, on the face fantastic. really pulls down, really right. takes out time. Really there's Botox around the eyes. You can also do a little eye lift where you take a little bit of extra skin out there. As mm -hmm. we age, it kind of builds up. 
you do anything to the eyes, it really refreshes your look and really mm -hmm. turns back time almost a decade. Just mm -hmm. something simple around the eyes. And I think that's the biggest, um, you know, if you were to do one thing to your face and make yourself look younger, it'd be something around the eyes or Fantastic. the brows. Fantastic. Then a lot of people come in as we age again, the face is kind of drooping a little bit more, like I was talking about before, the heart shape is turning into more of a square shape. And so what you do is you pull it up either with fillers or like a facelift. Mm -hmm. Facelift is a good procedure to pull everything back. It gets rid of these lines and also gives you fullness up here. Not only that, a lot of people complain about what we call jowls, which is like the, the yeah. jawline is not very well yeah. formed. You get these really bulgy things here. But what happens is with the facelift, it pulls all that up. And at the same time, if you want to get a neck lift, it pulls all the neck skin back. We can tighten the muscles here. Gives you a very, very nice, youthful contour and appearance. Gives you that. You know, some people have the turkey neck. A lot of times, yeah, you do that know. neck part. It gives you the very nice angle and, and nice, mm -hmm. youthful contour. Mm -hmm. Gets rid of some of this as well. Um, progressing down, a lot of the breast surgery that I do, a lot of breast augmentations. So, um, a lot of women come in here wanting breast augmentations. Either you know, younger women usually come in here just to enhance their cells to look a little bit bigger. Um, a lot of women come here after breast feeding and or weight Ooh. loss and this and that, and they have a lot of um, extra skin but not a lot of volume. So those patients would be a good candidate for what we call um, a breast lift and possibly an implant at the same time if they want more volume. So the lift gets rid of the extra skin because with breastfeeding, you know, yeah. the volume enlarges, but once the breast, you know, once the breast kind of go down with the, after breastfeeding, the, the, there's extra skin. Yeah. With the breast lift, you can actually take out that extra skin and make it look nice. And if you desire a larger breast, you can put an implant. Um, again, I do a lot of breast reconstruction. So patients who have cancer, yeah. who have um, had their breast removed, um, I can go in and kind of reconstruct the breast to make it look natural. Um, uh, then as we progress down, tummy tucks, liposuction, body contouring, a large part of what I do. Um, a lot, obviously a lot of people who have just a little bit of belly fat that they can't get rid of, but they want a smooth, flat abdomen, mm -hmm. you can go and cut that extra skin off. Um, a lot of pregnant women, mm -hmm. a lot of times I do here and there, um, when they have their baby or a C-section, we can go ahead and do a, a, a tummy tuck at the same time. Nice. Very safe. Once you're done, nice flat stomach, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> um, obviously, you have to be a can good candidate for that. Um, liposuction, very good at contouring the, hip, the, the waist and the hip. A lot of people want the nice hourglass right. shape. And so with the liposuction, you can really get the waist down. And then when you can take that fat and actually put it in the butt, which is the Brazilian butt lift, it's oh. a very, very um, trending procedure going on right now. You take the fat from the belly and wherever areas, the flanks, and you use that fat, you harvest it, and then you inject that part into the butt. So instead wow. of you know using all these um, silicones or things that are not safe for you, right, right. you're using your own fat, your own tissue, mm -hmm. that will survive, it's live, it's your own, you're not gonna reject it, it's your own tissue. And you inject it into the butt to give it that volume and that lift. And that, uh, does the fat last or does it? Yes. Yeah, oh, wow. So uh, with that particular procedure, about 25%, of 25%, about a quarter of it doesn't live. It's like transplanting one part, something from one part of the body to another. Mm. So it needs to build a blood supply, it needs to build nutrients, it needs to survive. So right. unfortunately, about you know, 20, 25% of it doesn't actually survive. But the 80% of it that does survive right. will last pretty much forever. It's Fantastic. your own tissue, it stays there. Um, obviously, if you work out, you lose weight, this and that, it will affect those fatty tissues, obviously. Right. But if you stay the same way and you continue your diet and whatever's going on, then that fat will stay um, pretty much permanently. 